Nestled in a busy neighborhood in Queens, New York is the home of Louis Latimer. Musician, artist, poet, Civil War veteran, inventor, draftsman, and electrical innovator. Latimer's story is seldom told. Louis Latimer was somebody who gave great contributions to um, the industry of electric lighting, which in turn uh, greatly enriched the lives of average Americans um, as a whole. Um, and you know, he's certainly not somebody that whose name is synonymous with the field of electric light, not let alone his own inventions. Lewis's father, George Latimer, was a slave in Virginia, and in 1842, George is given permission to marry another slave, Rebecca Smith. Later that same year, George and his new bride escape to Boston. Both George and Rebecca's owners immediately publish runaway slave notices, and 11 days after his escape, George Latimer is arrested, and Rebecca, fearing for her life, goes into hiding. George's arrest ignites the city of Boston. Abolitionists, including Frederick Douglass and William Lloyd Garrison, rallied to George Latimer's cause. Petitions, publications, and protests secure money to buy George's freedom. From all the attention, George Latimer becomes an icon in the struggle for freedom. In 1848, George and Rebecca welcome Lewis, their fourth child. While in grammar school, Lewis, a dedicated student, shows an interest in reading and drawing, though much of his time is spent working with his father. When Lewis is around 10 years old, George leaves the family, and Rebecca, now a single parent, sends Lewis and his brothers to a state institution known as a farm school. At age 16, Lewis enlists in the Union Navy and serves honorably on a gunboat during the Civil War. After the war, Latimer returns to Boston and through a lucky circumstance, he obtains a job as an office boy at Crosby, Halstead and Gold, a patent law firm. Latimer intently observes the draftsman, as his artistic interests spur a curiosity in drafting. He buys books and drafting instruments and teaches himself mechanical drawing. His talents are recognized and later he becomes a draftsman for the firm. At the time, draftsmen played a key role in securing a patent because drawings were critical to patent applications. A patent also has to explain uh, what your invention looks like or what it has to look like. Um, you have to imagine that this is something that's never existed before. So uh, having a skilled draftsman who's able to actually illustrate what your vision is, is uh, a really important part of uh, a successful patent. In the mid-1870s, Latimer spends long hours working closely with inventor Alexander Graham Bell drafting the images needed to secure a patent for the invention Bell calls the telephone. Working with Alexander Graham Bell in that kind of intimate way um, really put Lewis on the path to becoming interested in inventing himself. Managerial changes at Crosby, Halstead and Gold leads Latimer to quit. In 1879, he leaves Boston and moves to Bridgeport, Connecticut where he works in a machine shop and one day meets inventor Hiram Maxim, who was the chief engineer and founder of the United States Electric Lighting Company, a major competitor of Thomas Edison's incandescent lamp and electric light system. In February 1880, Maxim hires Latimer, and in June, Latimer and his family follows the company to New York City. And Maxim develops his own incandescent light uh, in the shape of an M after his name, and Latimer is one of the people he hires. He's involved in, in working in the uh, manufacturing, uh, developing the manufacturing process for the, the Maxim lamp. He takes out a couple of patents on improvements in the lamp and the manufacturing process. Uh, later, uh, Maxim uh, sends him to England to help set up the lamp factory in uh, London. While moving to London may have intrigued Latimer, his actual experience proves to be less than ideal, as his British employees are not used to taking orders from a black man, and there was a continual effort to discount him. To be able to deal with that on a daily basis and not, um, you know, lose your cool and um, argue back, and, you know, I think he was very well aware of uh, what his position was and how unique it was and how important it was for him to prove people wrong at every step of the way but with grace. He comes back, he works for some other electrical companies and then 
1888-89, he begins to work for Edison General Electric as a patent expert. So Latimer finds himself in a very unique position in that he has 11 years uh, experience working for a patent law firm and he also knows intimately the ins and outs of the uh, electric lighting industry. Uh, in 1890 he even published a little book on the Edison system and the development of the incandescent light by Edison and he becomes a patent expert. In a sense he's arguing for why Edison's patent should be fundamental and supersede maxims and other patents related to electric light. In 1918, Latimer becomes a founding member of the Edison Pioneers, a group organized to preserve the legacy of Thomas Edison. Latimer was the only African American in the organization. In 1912, Louis Latimer paints this self-portrait. While Latimer was obviously documenting a moment in time, the painting allows those who study him to ponder if this image really reflected his life as one of the earliest successful African-American inventors. <laughs>